When we consider the mechanics of breathing, we must consider two words. The first of which is inspiration, and inspiration is the gases as they flow into the lungs. The next phase is expiration, which is gas, gases that are exiting the lungs. So the next thing to consider with mechanics of breathing is the pressure relationships, because basically what drives the movement of oxygen in now the lungs is pressure relationships. So the two important pressures to know are the atmospheric pressure, which is one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level. And the other pressure is the intrapulmonary pressure. And this is the pressure that's in the alveoli, also called the intra-alveolar pressure. And what happens is this pressure always equalizes with the atmospheric pressure, 760 millimeters of mercury. So basically, the intrapulmonary pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure at one point, and then greater than the intrapleural pressure at one point. So this drives the air in and out of the lungs during inspiration and expiration. So the Next pressure is the intrapleural pressure, and this is the pressure that's in that pleural cavity, which fluctuates with breathing as well. And it's always a negative pressure, usually about four millimeters of mercury less than the pulmonary pressure. And so the two inward forces that promote lung collapse are the lung's natural tendency to recoil because of the elastic tissue, the elasticity, we call it, and also the surface tension of the alveolar fluid. And the surface tension is something that's reduced by surfactant, which, remember, is produced by the type 2 alveolar cells in the alveoli. So occasionally, hopefully not, doesn't happen very often, hopefully, but sometimes when there's a puncture to the lungs, as we see in this diagram, so that would be an example of like a knife wound, let's say. There's a, the parietal pleura, the outer membrane, outer serous membrane, is punctured, rupturing either to the parietal or the visceral pleura. And as a result, air is found then between the parietal and the visceral pleura. And this can lead to a pneumothorax, air in the pleural cavity that causes the intrapleural pressure to become equal to the intrapulmonary pressure, leading to a lung collapse. And the lung collapse, the term for this is atelectasis. So the pneumothorax is the air found, there's air between the two membranes, and then the collapsed lung is the atelectasis. So our next slide is mentioning atelectasis, which we just talked about. And again, that is lung collapse. Could be due to several different factors. Could be due to a problem with uh, bacteria, mucus in the bronchioles, plug bronchioles, leading to collapsed, the collapse of the alveolus. And then again, when there's air in the lungs, that is called a pneumothorax. And it could happen again because there's a wound, maybe a stab wound or a knife wound, like you saw in the previous slide, that increases the pressure in the intrapleural cavity. So pulmonary ventilation is inspiration and expiration. It's simply the process of breathing in and breathing out. And it's a mechanical process that depends on the volume changes in the thoracic cavity. And these volume changes lead directly to pressure changes. So essentially when one goes up, the other goes down. And this process of the these two factors being inversely related is called Boyle's Law. So again, when pressure goes up, volume goes down and vice versa. So pressure varies inversely with volume. So 
the first part of pulmonary ventilation is inspiration and it occurs because of inspiratory muscles muscles responsible for inspiration specifically the diaphragm and the external intercostals so the diaphragm it is going to be a dome-shaped muscle and when it contracts it flattens out and it increases the diameter the size of the thoracic cavity and the intercostal muscles specifically the external intercostal muscles are going to allow the rib cage to be lifted up and out so these two muscles are responsible for adequate ventilation of the alveoli and they can again it's maintained by these two muscles the diaphragm and the external muscles so you should know those muscles are responsible for inspiration so in this diagram we can see what happens the sequence of events for both inspiration and expiration so in inspiration the sequence of events are first that there is muscles that contract specifically the diaphragm and the external intercostals this causes thoracic volume to increase the lungs are stretched and the intrapulmonary pressure drops one millimeter mercury so it goes from 760 to 759 so it's not a big difference but it's significant enough to now allow gases to flow into the lungs and the expiration events we'll see next but it's simply the opposite of this occurring so the expiration events will be next but continuing the inspiration events there are additional muscles which are responsible for extra inspiration and so these are accessory muscles specifically the scalenes the sternocleidomastoid and the pectoralis minor so the sequence of events again for inspiration are shown on this slide which you've already seen so for expiration expiration normally is a passive process so quiet expiration breathing out is just the relaxation of those inspiratory muscles the diaphragm and the external intercostals however forced expiration is an active process this would be something like forcefully blowing air out maybe to blow a balloon up or something or it could be something like uh, vomiting something like that so these events are shown again in this same slide that we have already looked at but let's zoom in to look a little more closely at the expiration events so we can see inspiratory muscles are going to relax the diaphragm the external intercostals the thoracic cavity volume decreases the elastic lungs recoil passively if there's a problem with the elasticity of the lungs let's say there's scar tissue that's formed that causes a problem with exhalation expiration so when this occurs the intrapulmonary pressure rises to one millimeter above 760 and the air gases flow out of the lungs down their pressure gradient so they go from the lungs and we exhale the air so this diagram shows exactly what is happening to those pressure changes and we can basically see here first of all at the bottom of the slide we see the volume of breath and the normal volume that we breathe in and out of the lungs is what's called a tidal volume and it's going to be about approximately a half a liter so when this happens first of all at before we breathe in or breathe out the atmospheric pressure is equal to the pressure inside the lungs that's at zero so when we inspire the lung volume increases the intrapulmonary pressure goes down in relationship to atmospheric pressure so it's at 759 at this point and then when we exhale the opposite happens it goes up to 761 and again air is going to flow from areas of high pressure 
So low pressure as we exhale the air.